Hi everyone. Welcome to Fear Free Dermatology Patient Relief is a Priority with Michelle Rosenbaum, VMD, DACVD. I'm Christy Keith, Senior Communication Strategist for Fear Free. And before I introduce our speaker, I'd like to take care of just a few housekeeping items quickly. First, we'd like to thank our friends and Fear Free sponsors at Zoetis for making this webinar possible. We'd also like to thank all of you for making time for this webinar today. Next, CE is available for this webinar, but only for those of you viewing it live. There is no CE for anyone who is watching the recorded version. For the live attendees, I'll be sending an email immediately after this presentation that will contain a link to the survey you need to take or get raced CE. In the final question in the survey is a link to download a CE certificate that you can fill in with your name. However, if you don't provide accurate contact information and complete the survey, RACE will not process that credit. So be sure your con contact information when you take the survey is accurate. The survey will close on Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's July 29th, 3 p.m. Eastern United States time. So please take it as soon as you receive the email. If you don't receive my email within an hour after this webinar, because I send it immediately after, not the next day, but right away, you can contact me at fearfreepets at gmail.com. Uh, don't use the uh, regular Fear Free office number, the uh, office email address, because it'll take them time to forward it to me. And since the survey's only open for a short time, I don't want you to miss out. So fearfreepets at gmail.com, that comes directly to me and I will uh, take care of that for you. Um, and also please don't wait because if you contact me after the survey is closed, which again is Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern, I won't be able to help you. I can't reopen it. You will just miss out on your CE and that would be terrible. And everyone always asks if this is gonna be recorded and available online, it will. It will be available within around a week at fearfreepets.com slash webinars. Uh, because we're bringing this webinar in at only half an hour because it's during the workday, uh, we're not gonna be taking questions. We will, however, have a follow-up webinar on August 7, also at 1 p.m. Eastern. So be sure to save that date. You can sign up for that webinar. We're gonna be sending out a mailing actually today uh, to everyone, uh, letting them uh, know how to register for that webinar. Um, now all the housekeeping is over and it's my pleasure to introduce Michelle Rosenbaum, the MD, uh, Diplomate of the, um, the, uh, the American College of Veterinary Dermatology. After four years of private small animal practice, Dr. Rosenbaum returned to the University of Pennsylvania and completed her residency in dermatology and allergy, obtaining board certification from the American College of Veterinary Dermatology. She then continued as a lecturer in dermatology at Penn for three years. Dr. Rosenbaum joined a multi-specialty referral practice in Rochester, New York, where she practiced for eight years before joining Zoetis Pet Care as medical lead dermatology in 2006. Dr. Rosenbaum is a fear-free certified professional and has lectured extensively to veterinarians nationally and internationally and has published articles on a wide variety of dermatology topics. Her areas of particular interest include canine and feline allergic dermatitis and management of recurrent and resistant pyoderma. I'm going to guess that that's also of interest of a lot of you who are here today. Thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Rosenbaum. Please take it away. Thanks, Christy. Um, I'm so excited to be here. You know, we all love summer. Uh, the days are long and the temperatures are warm. We can get out and exercise and be with our pets and our family. Um, but as people and pets spend more time outdoors, the opportunities really increase for our canine patients to be exposed to fleas and environmental allergens like grass and tree pollens. And summer allergies to environmental allergens can really lead to itchy skin from allergic and atopic dermatitis. And we know that the signs of itch like constant scratching and chewing, licking, rolling, rubbing, scooting, head shaking can cause a lot of suffering and anxiety and stress in our canine patients and their pet parents. And then we see that stress when they come in to see us. These dermatology exams that we do can really cause some discomfort sometimes 
because the skin is so itchy and can even be painful in some cases. So it's really important that we use these fear-free techniques and principles to reduce the dermatology patient's fear, anxiety, and stress because most cases will be chronic. So they're gonna be coming in to see you repeatedly at, over the course of their life. And we want them to have a really good experience right from the beginning. And studies in the Journal of Investigative Dermatology and other human journals and mice and in people show that anxiety and stress can actually weaken the skin barrier. And this increases the skin's permeability to allergens and it can lead to an allergic flare. And we've probably all seen that when dogs are boarded or they're going, uh, undergoing a stressful situation like they're moving uh, and then the owner calls and says, oh my God, the skin is so red, it's all flared up. So there's actually a reason for that. So we really need to treat the whole patient, both the mind and the skin. So we know that itch can erode the special bond between dogs and their families. And itchy dogs are often up at night scratching and licking, as we can see here in this picture, and uh, preventing this owner from sleeping. And um, we know that there was a recent study published that over 50% of participants in a study of over 900 adults share their bed with at least one dog. Uh, so we know that keeping them up at night is, is a real problem. Uh, or these pets are banished to separate rooms of the house because their skin smells so bad. Uh, owners are often reluctant to pet or hold their dogs. Um, they might be, might be too embarrassed even to walk their dog outside because of their appearance. Um, and this really disrupts that bond. And this isolation and Lack of interaction can lead to anxiety and stress for the pets and their family. And you can learn more about how uncontrolled allergic itch can really stress this special bond between pets and their owners at the scienceofstrongerbonds.com. And this is a great website that I'm gonna to refer to um, repeatedly throughout this presentation that has a lot of really good resources for your whole team for seeing these dermatology patients. So because of this anxiety and stress, pet parents of itchy dogs, they're usually desperate, right, to try anything for relief for their dog. And we have some studies at Zoetis that show that before seeing the veterinarian, 88% of owners of itchy dogs have tried up to 15 over-the-counter options. And we all know what they're going to see. They're going to see coconut oil, apple cider vinegar, pet store treatments, antihistamines made for humans. Uh, maybe they'll put a t-shirt on, they'll do an oatmeal bath, uh, they'll change the diet to organic and grain-free, of course. Uh, and these solutions we know don't usually work for allergies in dogs, and they only serve to keep the pet owner and the dog on this emotional roller coaster where they're kind of looking for a cure, they're hoping for a cure, and then that's quickly followed by disappointment and frustration when these treatments fail. And so the stress and anxiety for the pet and the owner are building, the itch is continuing, the bond is further strained, and this cycle repeats many times up and down this roller coaster of emotions, and this just becomes exhausting for both the pet and their families. And a lot of times that's when we see them, when they're just completely frustrated and exhausted. And so when, when pet owners come to see um, us as the veterinary professional, they're really hopeful that we have something unique and a different treatment that is highly effective and safe that they haven't already tried. So if they receive this, of course, they're gonna be overjoyed, they're gonna be filled with relief, and they're really gonna become bonded uh, to you and the practice. But think of the reverse. If they're given yet another ineffective treatment like an antihistamine or an oatmeal bath, um, one that they probably could have gotten themselves at a drugstore or online or a pet store, then they're going to be probably a bit frustrated and they're going to go right back to Dr. Google again. So that's really what we're trying to avoid. And we know that itch is the number one reason for veterinary visits. In a secret shopper study that Zoetis did, where we called practices and spoke with customer service representatives, seven out of 10 uh, pet owners with itchy dogs who called the practice got a phone fix instead of an appointment. So make sure that your customer service representatives are giving owners of itchy dogs an actual appointment for an exam with the veterinarian rather than a phone fix with over-the-counter options unlikely to help such as, oh, go to CVS and get some Benadryl or try an oatmeal bath, put a t-shirt on him switch his diet, um, these things are unlikely to help. So make sure your customer service representatives are actually giving them an appointment. 
So pet owners are looking for innovative and unique therapies that are very effective, that work fast, and have a really low likelihood of side effects. And antihistamines made for human respiratory allergies are not effective for treating allergic itch in most dogs. And the International Committee on Allergic Diseases of Animals, or ICADA, in an evidence-based review, put antihistamines in the group of drugs likely to be of little or no benefit for acute flares of allergic dermatitis. And they say that they might provide a small and limited benefit in some dogs. I mean, how many disclaimers can you have in, in one sentence? And here we can see in this study that pretreatment itch scores for cetirizine, which is Zyrtec, a commonly used antihistamine, and placebo were similar pretreatment, where they both were about uh, seven in the cetirizine group, seven out of 10 itch level, and eight out of 10 in the placebo group. And then after two weeks, the cetirizine or Zyrtec group was still at a seven, so no change at all. The placebo group had actually improved a little, gone from eight to a seven. So you can see that in this uh, evidence-based, placebo-controlled, randomized, um, blinded study, that there really was no difference between antihistamines and a placebo. And ineffective therapies really lead to the anxiety, emotional roller coaster for pets and owners. So this is where you look to science and evidence rather than sort of, well, I used antihistamines on one dog and it seemed like it helped a little bit. And we all have those cases that we can think of. But if you look at it in, a, in an evidence-based review where they look at all of the studies done over years and years, many different studies, um, the conclusion by these experts um, in dermatology is that antihistamines are likely to be of little or no benefit. So what can we do to really help our customer service representatives when they're faced with owners that call and say, you know, isn't there something over the counter that I can do? And I don't know if I can really come in. Um, we have some helpful scripts that are available, at, again, at that same website, that scienceofstrongerbonds.com under dermatological resources. And we have these scripts that you can print out and laminate and keep right up front by your front desk. And these really help your customer service reps acknowledge how itch is affecting the dog and, and the owner. And it gives them some ideas on how to handle these objections. And there's even a space where you can write down some customized talking points for your practice that you can see here in white. And this is really the very first step on the path of, of real relief for them and their pet. So now that the pet owner has an appointment, Here's some key steps that your customer service representative can do to really ensure a successful dermatology visit. So what they want to do is on the phone when they're speaking to them and they're making that appointment, ask the owners if their pet gets anxious or stressed during the veterinary visit, uh, and if needed, prescribe these anxiolytic medications uh, that can be given before the pet even comes in. And these um, charts are available um, from the Fear Free website as far as dosing of these medications. And have the owner not feed the dog before the appointment and have them bring tasty treats to be used as food rewards during the appointment and the procedures. And remember, we're gonna maybe see some dogs on hypoallergenic diets, um, their germ cases. So have the owner bring their own treats um, that they've been using if they're on a hypoallergenic diet, such as rolled up balls of their canned food, um, rolled up almond butter, uh, I like vegan marshmallows. There's one brand called Dandies that's very good, uh, as long as they're not soy allergic, or even um, some cooked sweet potato. And have the owners fill out a dermatology check-in resource. And we can see that here. And again, this is available at the scienceofstrongerbonds.com under resources. And this just asks them common questions about their lifestyle and where they're itching on their body. Um, and it lets the um, customer service representative know right away, even pets coming in for wellness visits, if there's a possible skin problem. So this can be very helpful. Have owners bring all their previous medications to the appointment and have the owner not bathe the dog before the appointment or clean the ears. We want them in all their greasy, smelly um, glory before we come and, and take some cytology samples. So once we've got them checked in and, um, and we've got the appointment scheduled and they're ready for their visit, um, then our veterinary technicians also really play a key role uh, in, be, in that team approach of dermatology. 
so they can make the room ready for the derm exam. And, and you guys as, as fear-free practitioners are all familiar with this, but things like the pheromone diffusers, um, spraying pheromones on the clothing um, of staff and, and veterinarians, um, using uh, bandanas that are sprayed with pheromones um, on the pets to uh, help relax them, spraying towels that are on the exam table can all really help. Um, Use non-slip uh, mats, the yoga mats work really nicely, um, blankets and towels. And have your technicians keep these treats that we talked about um, in their pockets to give to the dog during these procedures. And this will really reduce the stress and anxiety. You can also have a treat menu for owners to choose. If they're not on a hypoallergenic diet and they haven't brought their own treats, then you can have a treat menu and have owners choose what they think their pets would like the best, whether it's spray cheese or peanut butter or, um, or canned food or something else. And these licky mats are helpful. These are uh, little rubber mats that have these little rubber protrusions that kind of hold the cheese or the peanut butter or the treat in these little crevices and it kind of slows down their ability to lick it all off right away. So this is something um, that can be used during the exam to distract the pet. And have anxious or stressed dogs or dogs with obvious skin infections um, wait outside and um, they can either wait in their car if it's not too hot or just wait outside the, the office um, outside. And this will help prevent spreading methicillin resistant infections. And then you can call them or text them when, they're, when the, the veterinarian is ready to see them. And then take them directly to a designated dermatology exam room that's already stocked with all your needed supplies and equipment. And that's because if you have to keep leaving the room or bringing the pet to the treatment area and back again, that can all be very stressful, both for the pet and the owner. Then your technician can go over the history form uh, and ask clarifying open-ended questions. So what concerns you about Squeaky's itching? Tell me more about, um, about Fluffy's paws and, and how he's licking. So not really yes or no answers, but things that will get them to tell their story. And you wanna do this while showing empathy and concern because then people are more likely to really open up and, and give you the whole story. You can help the owner understand this itch tracker. And again, this is available at scienceofstrongerbonds.com under resources. And this is a great resource because they can use it at home and they can fill out their pet's itch level and then bring this back to the practice for each of the recheck appointments. And we're hoping to see this itch level kind of go down over time. And our goal is to find a treatment that will reduce the itch by at least 50%. Technicians can also perform a really thorough flea combing and then help the veterinarian to perform this basic derm database such as skin scrapings and skin and ear cytologies. And Zoetis has partnered with uh, NAVDA to provide a virtual dermatology diagnostics course. And this is available at ce.navda.net for your technicians to uh, view and to take this course. And it shows how to do all the common dermatology um, scrapings and cytologies and also how to interpret uh, some cytologies under the microscope. So I really recommend that they take a look at that. And the technicians are also going to go over the written discharge instructions with the owners to, and this will really help improve their compliance, uh, including the dosing uh, and instructions for administration or application of the medications. And, and again, this kind of frees you up. If they're able to do some of these diagnostics and go over a lot of the education with them, then you're more freed up to develop that treatment plan and, and educate the owner. And then you as the veterinarian uh, is going to perform your thorough derm physical exam. And it's important, I think, to stress to pet owners of breeds who are really prone to allergies. So Goldens and Labs and Frenchies and Bulldogs and Westies, and I mean, what breed isn't prone to allergies at this point, um, to really start preparing now when they're puppies uh, for what may be needed later. So if they prepare when they're eight or 10 or 12 weeks old and get them used to being handled using desensitization techniques with treat rewards, such as touching the ears, touching the paws, um, turning them on their side and touching their underside, um, cleaning their ears, 
bathing them. This makes it so much easier when they're older and they have to treat their allergies. And I did this with my own dog um, just routinely as soon as I got him home as a puppy. And he ended up being a pretty severely allergic dog, which I didn't know he was going to become that at, over time. But boy, that really helped um, because I could do all of those things so much more easily when he was older. Treats can be given to distract the dog during the exam. We talked about the licky mats. Um, you can also use paper cups that are spread with spray cheese or peanut butter. Um, examine the pet where they're most comfortable. So, uh, and with the owner, I think it's really important not to, like I said, keep taking them in and out of the room, uh, not having a lot of people going back and forth. That can be very stressful. Uh, so larger dogs can be on the floor with a non-slip yoga mat. Um, smaller dogs on the exam table covered in a warm fluffy blanket that's sprayed with pheromones. And we want to start the exam with the less sensitive areas, such as the back and the chest, before kind of slowly and continuously moving to the more sensitive areas like the face, the ears, the paws, uh, the axilla, the groin, and the genital areas. And these are all areas that tend to be more affected with skin problems. So we want to be very um, cautious and gentle uh, and take breaks when we need to when we're doing this exam because the skin is sensitive and, and it can be very itchy and, and, and uncomfortable for the pet. Sometimes lifting the patient gently up on their hind legs to examine the underside can be less stressful for some smaller patients um, than kind of having to lay them down. And sometimes gently just scratching that itchy spot with one hand can, can really help relax the patient during the exam. And a lot of times we end up needing to clip the hair to really see the skin lesion, um, especially in folds or with hot spots. And we really want to go slowly because a lot of times that will just make dogs even more anxious when they hear the noise of the clippers. So we may really have to take breaks and kind of assess their level of anxiety and stress um, periodically, especially if we're going near their head or around some sensitive areas. And at some point, we, we really might need to sedate these dogs if, if they're escalating to the point where we're just not able to get them back to that relaxed state. And, um, and sedation can be very, very helpful in our derm exams, especially when you have to look at the ears. We want to note the lesion type, um, any type of symmetry. Uh, allergies uh, tend to be symmetric. Autoimmune disease tend to be symmetric. Diseases such as infection um, or neoplasia tend to be asymmetric. And consider taking digital photos to track the progress uh, for the owners. A lot of times they don't really realize that they're getting better, but if you can show them, this is what you know, Max looked like a month ago. Oh my God, he really is a lot better. Look, he didn't have any hair there. So that can be helpful too. Some early clues of allergies include mild erythema on the medial aspect of the pinna that we can see here. Sometimes we'll see that just on the, the the caudal metacarpal area in between the toes um, or on the paws. Um, the medial elbow is another area. And these are just early clues that you want to look for, even if a dog comes in just for a wellness exam, that they may actually starting, be starting to have early signs of allergy. Then as the disease becomes more chronic, we tend to see more alopecia, more brown paw staining. Always look for yeast when you have the brown staining, especially around the nail beds. And this hyperpigmentation and lichenification of the skin really tells you that this has been going on for at least six months. So if an owner says this just started and his skin looks like this German Shepherd here, we know that this has been going on a lot longer. Some other common patterns are the pants pattern. So the area over the rump, the tail base, the groin area that's very commonly seen with flea allergy, uh, scabies where we see the ear margins, the elbows, and the hocks, as well as um, the ventrum. And then food allergy or atopic dermatitis, where we see the pinna being affected, uh, the axillary area, the ventrum, and the paws. And food allergy can also present with ears and rears, with a more of a pinitis, uh, an otitis, and, and lesions um, in the perianal area. You can make up a derm toolbox with all the supplies that you need to keep in the designated derm exam room. And they're listed here. Um, and I think this really, really helps because it reduces the need for your staff to go in and out of the room looking for supplies or for the pet to have to be taken to the exam room. And this can lead to 
a lot of fear, anxiety, and stress in many dogs, and in owners too, when they don't know where their dog went and what's being done to them. So during your fear-free derm exam, we wanna start with the least invasive techniques first when we're doing our derm techniques. And these are things like impression smears and leave the more invasive techniques like skin scrapings for last. And what you can do is sort of scratch gently adjacent to the area that you wanna do an impression smear or a scrape on while your technician is feeding treats to, to your patient um, or use the licky mat that we talked about to provide the treats. And we wanna check in with the patient periodically and stop and take a break if we need to. And really, if it gets to the point where you're just not able to do these techniques because the patient is just too itchy or too uncomfortable or even painful, then we can put off the scraping for now and perform a hair pluck or a tape impression instead. And so hair plucking and tape impressions are good alternatives to skin scrapings for Demodex and these more sensitive areas like around the eyes or on the paws, and they tend to cause a lot less discomfort and require less restraint. So for hair plucking, for looking for Demodex, you wanna use a curved mosquito hemostat to quickly and gently pluck 10 to 20 hairs from the lesion and examine them in mineral oil. And for the tape technique, you can press clear tape onto the skin and squeeze the tape and the skin for two to three seconds to squeeze the mites out of the follicle like we can see here. And repeat this two to four times. And then we're gonna peel off the tape and place it onto a glass slide. And if you find mites with hair plucking or tape impressions, then there's no need to go on and scrape. You've got your diagnosis. But if you don't find any mites, then you can decide if returning to deep scraping, maybe with sedation, is needed to rule out mites. And again, we can use reversible sedation and pain control if needed for our derm exams, for otoscopy, and for our procedures to really reduce the fear, anxiety, and stress in this itchy patient. And in, in my experience, often sedation allows you to do a much more thorough skin and ear exam. It makes collection of the samples much easier and quicker. Uh, and, and I think it's really underused and, and we should be doing it a lot more. The ears are particularly sensitive and any manipulation has the potential to induce a fear, anxiety and stress reaction. So again, this is one of those things that as a puppy, have the owner practicing desensitization techniques at home. Um, without any ear medication or cleaners. So just touching the ear, uh, just kind of looking down the ear, giving them food rewards for touching the ear. And when we have a really acute painful otitis, we're really not gonna be able to do a thorough exam. So that's where we have to use our sedation um, to reduce the, the anxiety and stress uh, and pain associated with these ears because they're very sensitive and can be, um, cause a lot of discomfort when we're examining the pet. So if the, the ear disease is painful, if it's very ulcerative and erosive, then we really wanna limit the awake exam just to sort of visualizing the canal opening and the most proximal portion of the vertical canal. And we can start with food rewards and a, a calm and gentle touch on the shoulders. And if that's accepted, then we can move our hand from the shoulder to the neck uh, and then to the base of the ear and then lift the pinna and then touch the opening to the canal. And we're gonna be gentle and take breaks and reward the patient. And again, if it gets to the point where you're not even able to touch the ear, that's where we need to consider sedation. And then we're gonna shine the otoscope without touching the canal, and then gently touch the tip to the canal, and then finally advance the scope into the vertical canal with the ear in the resting position. We don't wanna be like yanking on these ears or, uh, or really manipulating them more than we have to. And try to keep the scope tip really centered in the lumen. Uh, if we're gonna be banging it against the walls of the canal or scraping it against the walls, that's gonna be very, very painful for the dog. And then we're gonna gently extend the pinna and lower the otoscope in a single smooth moment, uh, movement. And that's gonna permit us to really look at the horizontal canal and the tympanic membrane. And then when we're getting the ear cytology, with the ear in this relaxed position, we're gonna enter the center of the canal lumen and then rotate the swab very gently in the vertical canal. 
And again, we're going to avoid trying to remove a lot of debris with the cotton swab. This can lead to canal erosions uh, and more fear and anxiety and stress. So the team approach is very important. I think everybody in the practice needs to be on the same page with these derm cases and both in practicing fear-free techniques and also in um, really managing the journey of our derm patient from the minute they come to our practice to, uh, to their, the minute that they leave. And we have some great resources for the team approach to dermatology, again, at the scienceofstrongerbonds.com under resources. And this is another good resource that I actually um, helped to develop with Zoetis, which is for animal care assistants and groomers. And it's called the Skin Health for Support Staff Resource. And one side, as we can see here, shows the common signs and patterns of skin disease. And the other shows images of common skin problems like allergies, hot spots, and infection that we can see here. And you can put this poster up in your treatment room, in your kennel area, your grooming area, and all of your support staff can then recognize the signs of skin disease, uh, maybe in a dog that's boarding or coming in for grooming, and they can quickly get a veterinarian to examine the pet before the problem gets worse. So your team can, can really work together um, as a professional team to really give relief of the stress and anxiety of itch for your patients. And, and this really provides peace of mind for, uh, for pet parents. So August is coming up and August is Itchy Pet Awareness Month. So we want you to get your practice and your staff really ready. And we have a number of great resources for you. Again, you can go to scienceofstrongerbonds.com and you can look for your Itchy Pet Awareness uh, Toolkit. If you're going to the AVMA um, meeting next month in Washington, DC, um, there are gonna be a lot of um, publicity there about Itchy Pet Awareness Month. But you can see that we have templates that you can use on your Facebook page, for Instagram, on your website. Um, there's just a lot of really good information there. So make sure that you check that out. And this is that website, scienceofstrongerbonds.com. And if you just go to resources, which is up here on the right side, that's where you're gonna find all this great stuff. And here's the part for Itchy Pet Awareness Month. So you as your patient's veterinary professional, um, whether you're a veterinarian, um, whether you're a veterinary nurse, a support staff, you're the best partner for the pet parents to provide the real relief for your canine patient's itchy skin. And we all know that our patients deserve comfort and relief from the anxiety and stress of itchy allergic skin disease. And, and our pet owners deserve that peace of mind that goes with this itch relief for their best friend. And itch relief can really restore the special bond between the pet and their pet parent. And it's also gonna strengthen the bond between the owner and your whole practice team. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Dr. Rosenbaum. That was incredible. And I, I really loved and appreciated how much uh, the fear-free approach can make a difference for people's patients. You did a beautiful job of presenting that. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who came and spent time with us today. We really appreciate you and also Zoetis for making this presentation possible. Um, for those who are attending the live webinar, just a reminder, I will be sending out CE email in a few minutes. And remember to email me at fearfreepets at gmail.com if you do not receive it within the next hour. The CE survey is only open until Monday afternoon, so please take it right away. Um, and CE is not available for those of you who are watching the recorded version of this. Thanks again, and we hope to see you for the next dermatology webinar with Dr. Rosenbaum on August 7th. Thanks, have a great day, everyone.